We get to find the solutions to our equations in this section. So uh, previously, we've been given the value for our variable that we plug in and then find a final solution. Now we're going to be given an equation, and we have to then find a process for finding out what that unknown value is that makes our statement true. When we're solving equations or expressions in general, we follow the order of operation, PEMDAS. But when we are trying to then solve for a variable, a number, some unknown, we actually need to reverse that process and turn it into SADMAP. And really the E and the P don't really apply. We're just finding all instances of addition and subtraction in that original problem and clearing those out before then we potentially move on to then the division or multiplication occurring in the problem and then solving that. So when we are given an equation like this, we have some a number plus 7 that is equivalent to 15. Now we could probably mentally map that and figure out what would I add to 7 to make 15. Oh, it's going to be 8. But that's easy. That's, a, that's, that's something we can do in our head. We need to practice the process when we're not sure what the answer might be, where we can't just rely on our, our comfort with smaller numbers. So what we have here is an addition problem, that this 7 is supposed to be being added to the P. Our goal, the way that we solve for our variable is we want it isolated. We want it all by itself on one side of the equation and the number on the, and any numbers that we have on the other side. So currently I have a positive 7 on this side with the P. I need it to go away. And what we're trying to do here is actually have a 0 instead of a 7. Well, what would I combine with a 7 to make it worth 0? I would subtract 7. So what I have done is I've used the opposite operation to clear this 7 out. I had an add 7, so I need to subtract 7, and in doing so, it goes away. But what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So I would take 7 away here. 15 minus 7 is 8 so that we have p equals 8. Now you should double check, is this solution true? If I plugged in an 8 here and I went 8 plus 7, is that equivalent to 15? Yep, so we have it solved. Here, I need to isolate the y. I want the y all by itself. What's in the way of the y being alone? A negative 5. So I need to use the opposite operation. Instead of subtracting 5, I need to add 5, but I have to do it to both sides. It cancels out on the right, leaving me with 7 for y. And it doesn't matter which side the y is on, whether it's first or second, it just matters that it's on one side and the number is on the other. So y equals 7. I plug that in to double check. If I have a 7 and I take away 5, is that leaving me with 2? Yes. So 7 would be the solution to this equation. Here I have a statement saying 8 times a number equals 32. Now if you're good with your factors of, or your multiples of 8, you could figure this out on your own. Uh, but let's rely on math as for practice. So if I look at this, anytime I have a number touching a variable, it means multiplication. Well, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So instead of multiplying by 8, I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. And doing so, 8 divided by 8 turns into 1. 1 times the z is just z. So the 8 gets to basically just get canceled out when it's divided by itself. And then I go over here, 32 divided by 8 is 4. So based on this, my solution for z should be 4. And I double check it, 8 times 4, is that equal to 32? Yep, so there we go. Here, we have a fraction bar representing the division process. I have a being divided by 4, and when I do that, I'm supposed to have that equal 6. Well, what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So if I multiply both sides by 4 then, this basically, through Karas canceling, turns into a over 1. a over 1 is just a, and then I go 6 times 4 to get 24. Then I verify that that solution is correct by plugging in the value for my number. 24 divided by 4 equals 6. Yes! So there we go. The other thing to remember is that a variable is a placeholder for a number. 
So it cannot have a negative value. It's just a placeholder. It's a substitute. It doesn't have any value, so we can't put a sign on it. So to get the negative off of the variable, we need to do what's called the inverse, or find the inverse, which just means the opposite of. And the way to do that is, if I have a negative, what operation lets me cancel out a negative and make it a positive? Multiplying by a negative. So what we do is we wrap the entire equation up in parentheses and we put a negative in front. This is called the inverse or the opposite of. If you need a number, you can go ahead and imagine it as a negative one, so that then you can be multiplying numbers by one. The values never change. The only thing that it means is you just turn the opposite sign of everything inside. This literally says the opposite of. What's the opposite of a negative m? A positive m. What's the opposite of a positive seven? A negative seven. So we can have numbers, actual values be negative, but we cannot have the variables be negative in our final answer. Sometimes when we're solving equations, our variable is going to have a negative sign on it, but we never leave it in the final answer. The other thing to consider is sometimes we're going to have fractions. Don't panic over the fraction, just understand what operation is supposed to be occurring. Four-fifths times some number gives me six-sevenths. Well, this saying multiplication means I have to divide both sides by four-fifths. When I divide by a fraction, it means I copy, dot, and flip it. So that's basically what I would do over here. I would multiply this by, well, I'll give us a little more room multiply this by the reciprocal. Well, five and five cancel out into one. Four and four cancel out into one. One over one is one. One z is just z. So then here, so I have z equaling whatever this is, I can look at six and four and see, oh, I can divide two out of those, reducing this down to a three, because six divided by two is three. Four divided by two is two. And then I can go ahead and multiply straight across. 3 times 5 is going to be 15. 7 times 2 is going to be 14. And I can't make that any smaller. There's no number that divides out of 15 that also divides out of 14. So that should be my solution. Double check it. Okay? This just lets you know if you had forgotten to do the copy dot flip, whether your answer would be right or not. So when we plug in 4 fifths and we multiply it by our solution for z, which we got as 15 fourteenths, I can cross cancel here. 5 divided by 5 is 1, 15 divided by 5 is a 3. 4 and 14 can both have, are both even, so I can take out a 2, leaving me with 2 and 7. So now, if I go 2 times 3, I get 6, and 1 times 7 is 7. So that worked out. I was able to verify that my solution was accurate at the 15 fourteenths. And that is one-step equations in a nutshell.